on an island. They, the same people who made the park decide to make a new park. This park will be named shortly. Because no one knows what it might be called. But they're going to get the staff equipment up. Like the power station and an AC, an ACU center and an ACU center and a ranger station was is being built as well now it's time to get to the to the road to the new safari park and the guests and the guest shops all the shops are being made and they will be and they will connect the path to the power station the ranger station and the ac center the first enclosure built for a dinosaur called the Gallimimus. The first dinosaur will be the Gallimimus. A beautiful creature. Picture an ostrich with a tail and arms and claws. Technically, that's exactly what it is. It's probably about the same size or even bigger than an ostrich. The staff go in the rain go in the ranger in the staff go in the vehicle to see on how the the fir, their first safari enclosure is. But they'll have to go along a, a long road. They say that they're gonna have they're gonna put more herbivores around that around the um, Gallimimus enclosure. So what you do, you come in, you can see the Gallimimus there. And there, and then you go on a different exhibit. They think it'll be absolutely great. But they say since the gate is on sensors, it's meant to expand it. And that's exactly what they do. After the following days, the ranger team decide to go check out the enclosure now that it's been expanded. When they go in the gate, it has gotten a lot bigger. So they go for a mid-stop, checking out the watering hole, the trees, and the food. And they say it looks amazing. They decide to make another ranger station, or jeep station. For the safari park, while the other, while the uh, ranger station is for resupplying feeders. And Gallimimus, now, now, is finally seeing the light of day. For safe tra tra transportation, they use helicopters to try not to injure or hurt, a, hurt any dinosaur. So they use it by hello so they do it by helicopter. The flares, the blue flares on the ground show where they are going to put the Gallimimus in their enclosure. They go ahead to make another enclosure for a big for two bigger dinosaurs than Gallimimus. And in fact, here are the Gallimimus in their new enclosure. But now they're gonna have to get the other enclosure ready. They put the gate inside the enclosure to, and the 
and they had to make a road because the gate was to the side, so it looks like a V or an L. So, in the middle of the V or L, or a, next to the L, or in, no, never mind, they put forest on one side and water and food on the other for those dinosaurs. And those dinos are Hoyangosaurus and Polacanthus. The Polocanthus is like an ankylosaur, pictured as paleontologist as a walking, as a living, walking, spiky tank. That's basically the Polocanthus. It has armor on its back, like the ankylosaurus. So that is what. So that is why paleontologists call it the spiky living tank. And the ankylosaurus is called the living tank because it also has lots of armor, but it also has a it also has a rock shaped club on its tail, which is just very hard bone. The hyangosaurus have plates on its back, not the plates for dinner. It's like they're kind of like spikes, but they're not. You'll see them in a second. And they have gigantic shoulder spikes. In fact, here is one. Here is the Hoyangosaurus. The Hoyangosaurus. This herbivorous creature. And this is what I mean by the plates. Those small spike-like things on its back kind of then form into spikes. The real spikes are on its tail. The red flares are to show the helicopter where the dinosaur is. So if it's in the forest, they see some smoke from the flare, that's where the dino is. And it doesn't injure nor hurt the dinosaur while tranquilized while being carried in a by a helicopter. To show that these jeeps are the guest jeeps, they're red. They go ahead to the Engalamimus exhibit to see how it looks. Now they have to be very quiet because first of all, Gallimimus are sleeping, and second of all, it could they could get scared. Now here's a size compared to a human and a Gallimimus. If you're not lucky, you'll cause a panic. Try not to, to try not to cause panic. They move along. As the Hoyangosaurus is already almost there, because they she see the helicopter shadow. They go toward, they go inside its enclosure, and stop to wait for the herbivore. It takes a little while for a dinosaur to get carried down, and here it is. The Huyangosaurus. This dinosaur will probably love it here. And soon Polacanthus will be here. In fact, here it is now. This is what I meant by a spiky tank. A living spiky tank. Armored, spiked, and it's living. They're planning on making their first carnivore, so they make an enclosure with another gate to the side. But it's all the way at the end of the enclosure to the right. So it looks like a giant L. A giant backwards L. To avoid running into a goat, running over a goat, they decide just to plop meat on the feeder. 
dead. The things that, that are dead. And the dinosaurs are Deinonychus. Deinonychus is a type of raptor. Even though it doesn't have a raptor in its name, it is. It even has a toe claw. The, di the Deinonychus has what looks kind of, what looks like kind of like a sail or a fin on its head and its tail, not on its back. And when the park opens, this episode will end. And after we check out the enclosure. Okay, maybe I'll end the episode after that. I might just make more enclosures and all that. There will be a her another herbivore enclosure. Oops. And this one will have dinosaurs that you wouldn't really expect in a Jurassic Park. Those two herbivores are Chunkingosaurus. And the Deinonychus are already being airlifted. The Chunkingosaurus looks like the Hoyangosaurus would have bigger plates that looks more like spikes. And besides, they need and instead of just being happy with just their set themselves, they just need a company of the same dinosaur as them. And here they are. Chunkingosaurus. Now this is something you wouldn't really expect from a Jurassic Park. Especially like something like the Hoyangosaurus. But every time a dinosaur gets hit by a tranquilizer, everyone panics. And it takes two to take these guys down. The Deinonychus like their new enclosure, especially their new p their puddle of water. And the Chunkingosaurus will probably love their exhibit. They add a little more forest to the exhibit because they have been known to love a forest a lot. A big enclosure was made is going to be made for the first tall herbivore. That is why they added something to the herbivore feeders they make it taller but just in case they need more space they've already got more path we'll stop getting the jeep to check out on how cool this this park will be wanted once it is open and they're planning on making a hotel so the first dinosaur will be gallimimus they frolic in herds, or they flocks, whatever. They're mostly like birds. Then you go to, then they go, go to where the new dinos are. As the new polycanthus is right over there. Now this is their first carnivore, so they are hoping they do not die. In fact, one is right in their way. So they get quickly away from the, from the gate as possible, letting the Deinonychus know what is around. Most of the times they'll surround, but right now they don't seem to be. They'll run around and surround, but they don't seem to today. Well, one of them is. It must be because of the red color. Since Deinonychus is also is red also, and so is Jeep, it must think 
it's a Deinonychus or some other type of, of its species, just bigger. But one thinks it's prey, two thinks it's prey. So they go ahead and get out of there. Into Chungkingosaurus' enclosure. After that, they, they're going to go to what is going to be a new, a tall herbivore exhibit. They think it'll need to be bigger. They made the path kind of short here, so they can have enough trees to put in. Because this dinosaur loves trees. And they, and he doesn't not, he just follows the, this guy follows the path. And he does not want dinosaurs roaming free. So they go ahead and build the enclosure. Those tree-loving tall herbivores are Brachiosaurus. They're making three of them. It will be a perfect addition to whatever this park is going to be called. Something it might be just called a safari park or Jurassic Safari. Which we don't think those are names, good names. So they've come up with a name. They thought it would be cool to call it... The Dinosaur Sahara Safari. Even though Sahara is like, is from Africa, they thought it would be a cooler name. So, that's what they call it. They decide to build a monorail station going around where the park will be, a hotel and, and, um, and they move the emergency shelter. As a big herbivore, a tall herbivore, Brachiosaurus comes out of it, comes out of the hatchery. This magnificent beast takes a lot more than two to bring down. But thanks to its large size, it is an easy target. And because of all the tranquilizers, it'll probably just plop to the ground now. That looked like it hurt. The guy who works, who is in the hatchery, who opens the gates, thinks there is only one Brachiosaurus. Well, there's three. It will be some time until he realizes there are more than one Brachiosaurus. They can't tranquilize them now because they don't want to put a flare inside the hatchery. So they don't do anything. The guy finally opens the gates for the Brachiosaurus. I thought there was two, but there's three. The Brachiosaurus are coming in their enclosure, so they will have to either expand it or keep it in or they'll either have to expand it or give them more forest. Let, let's see.
They need more forest. The Brachiosaurus are happy. And they love their new exhibit. Water, food, enough space, and trees. It's amazing. A new exhibit is for a carnivore. But instead of light steel, no more electrical, it's heavy steel fencing. And this is a mixed carnivore enclosure. So the dinosaurs will be... Majungasaurus and Dilophosaurus. There will be two Dilophosaurus and one Majungasaurus. And until it opens, it'll be amazing. They're planning on opening after they get their T-Rex. And they decide to do something. You can, in fact, you are now allowed, they are thinking of letting them allowed to walk around the exhibits if they don't have enough money. And once it's built, they will see if they like it. I was making a video. Oh, sorry. Thankfully, I paused it. Sorry. Look what I'm doing. I'm like building a safari park. Uh -huh. So this is what you do. So first of all, you get in your Jeep. You go on these paths. And then you find a gate. The Jeep will go through the gate. You'll see these little ostriches. And if you're not lucky like I am, you'll cause a panic. Mm -hmm. Run them over! <laughs> and then next you'll see bigger herbivores. Mm -hmm. The Polycanthus and Hoyangosaurus. Mm -hmm. That guy's the Polycanthus, that's the Hoyangosaurus. Mm -hmm. Alright, I'll give it your video. Oh, I was just going to show you the carnivores. Oh, okay, go the, the, um, carnivores, and that's it. So when you come through here, the most dangerous, well, so far the most dangerous part of these places. Dinonychus. The Hiccuposaurus. Cool. Yeah, and I'm also, and I've also got chunking of sores and bracky sores and I'm planning on Dilophosaurus and Majungasaurus in that enclosure. So you figured out all how your dinosaurs weren't getting out of the gate? Or do they still get out of the gate? They don't they don't go in or nor out. They well they just stay in the enclosure. Oh you right here we go. Okay. Thank <laughs> you.